Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with our live shop talk number seven where we are going to be talking about artificial intelligence. What I need you to do today is pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee because you're going to need it. We're going to go through a lot of really cool stuff today. So pour your coffee and let's get ready to talk about artificial intelligence and specifically let's get ready to talk about artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. Before we get started, I wanted to, uh, let's see, where did that crazy thing go? Uh, oh, I wanted to just uh, remind you a little bookkeeping item. Uh, a lot of you guys have ordered the BN0, uh, BNO055 non-axis inertial measurement system uh, sensor. A lot of you guys are clamoring for me to release that course. And so I'm happy to say that I feel like we have a critical mass. So Thursday, we will release the first lesson of our uh, non-axis inertial measurement uh, system program. And just as a reminder of what we are going to be doing, uh, that uh, here on my board, you can see that I have an Arduino Nano connected to a BNO055 sensor. And then I have gone through all of the trigonometry and all the math and all the quaternions such that I can generate a 3D visualization. I want to get maximum effect here because I worked a long time on this thing. So let's see if I can get out of your way and I bring the sensor over here and you can see whatever I do with this board is reflected in the virtual world and so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the lesson so if you guys have the sensor you can get this same type of simulation going look at that upside down uh-huh straight up over rolling rolling pitching, pitching, yawing, that this thing doesn't have any dead spots. You can see that I am all the way around that 360 degree sphere of that unit circle vector, that unit vector. We are tracking things. Now, is that pretty cool or is that pretty cool? I've got to go back and look at the chat here and see if anybody is saying that's pretty cool. Okay, I got a lot of hellos. Uh, got a lot of hellos. Hey, is anybody going to give me a thumbs up on that uh, on that uh, project? So this is your last chance. If you guys have not ordered this sensor yet, you need to go ahead and you need to order your sensor so that we can all start together on Thursday because I really want us to kind of work on this together if we can because one of the things is, man, there's there's like one of me and there's over 100,000 of you as far as the subscribers go. And so if we go th through this together, there's more chance that we can kind of develop a sense of community and you guys can kind of help each other out if there's any hiccups along the way. But the lessons are done. They're ready to release. I'm going to be releasing one lesson a week on Thursday on the IMU project. And then we're going to continue releasing our Arduino uh, lessons, but only one Arduino lesson a week instead of two. So we'll have an Arduino lesson released on Tuesday. We'll have the non-axis IMU lesson released on Thursday. And when I can, we will continue to have live chats. I am so pumped about what I am fixing to show you guys. The topic of today's show is artificial intelligence. And I will let you guys know that I got my Arduino Nano in and the good news is I actually am able to stream from it today for the live broadcast. You know on Friday we tried but the the system kind of crashed on me 10 minutes before the uh, program went live and so we went ahead and kind of had a little bit of a chat session on Friday but today you're going to get to see this thing in action. This my friend is the Jetson Nano. It has a hundred and twenty eight cores on it. It is, let's see, I'll show it here compared to a Raspberry Pi. You can see it's just a little bit bigger than a Raspberry Pi, but about the size of a Raspberry Pi. But it is a super computing monster board. 
And the amazing thing to me is, is that I think, it, what is it, 500 gigaflops, 500 giga floating point operations per second that this thing can do on 128 cores. And you can get the board for 100 bucks. It's just like, man, I was blown away. And the real question I had, though, is, is that in a lot of the reviews and a lot of the programs you see, it's just like they get up and they start rolling off a lot of numbers and a lot of uh, this is and that's and then they'll like run a little benchmarking and show you benchmark numbers but always for me the question is I don't care about those numbers can it deliver computing horsepower to me in a usable fashion because no matter how many cores you have if you don't have the IO to service those cores they're not doing you any good. No matter how many cores you have, even if you have the I.O., if the development environments and the programming environments can't take a take advantage of that parallel processing capabilities, you're just sitting there wasting your time. And kind of the example I would give you, you guys that have been around for a while know how badly I hate Intel, I mean, no, how badly I hate Windows, right, Microsoft, that it doesn't matter how much horsepower Intel can put on a chip, Microsoft is going to figure out a way to bring that to its knees and make a chip that is unbelievably fast run like molasses. And so like when I have like a very powerful PC, like kind of a state of the art desktop business PC, and it takes seven minutes to boot. Okay, it takes seven minutes to boot. So no matter how fast the computer is, Windows, uh, Windows is gonna figure out a way to mess it up. So what my real question with this Nano was, can, first of all, is the infrastructure out there where a mere mortal can play with it and program it? And then if they can, can a mere mortal get in there and access that computing power? So those were the two things that I was playing around with. And I'm happy to say yes and yes. And I can't tell you how excited I am about this platform. A little bit about what I have here. I got the nano board, which is just the kind of board that, and then I got an acrylic case for it. Because really with a board like this, I don't want to be like the Raspberry Pi, right? I don't want to be that guy that's got Raspberry Pis laying around and wires all coming out and a big rat's nest mess. I really wanted to kind of do this, right? So I got the acrylic case. The neat thing is the acrylic case comes with a fan and this thing with 128 cores, it gets hot. Okay, it really, really gets hot. So the neat thing was this little acrylic case with the fan, I think was about 15 bucks. Also, when I'm doing these things, I hate having a lot of wires. I want to get a, a rid of as many wires as possible. <coughs> so I went ahead and I got the little Intel Wi-Fi board that mounts right to the motherboard. And then you can see out here the Wi-Fi antennas. Nicely, they go with the acrylic case very well. Uh, let's see. So I got the case. Ah, I also got the Pi Cam. Okay, the Pi Cam will mount and is compatible with the uh, with the Jetson Nano. Now let me tell you. I bought this case, and the guys advertised that it came with a little acrylic case for the camera. But when I got it, the little acrylic case with the camera wasn't there. But I wrote them, and they promised me they're sending me a new kit that includes the case for the camera because I want a nice setup. Okay, another uh, thing, I would really like to minimize all these wires coming out. But uh, for right now, because I want to screencast, I've got to have the... HDMI cable so I can run it into my broadcast software so you can actually see what's happening. You can see that I have a little bitty dongle here that uh, is working properly. Also, they have an on-the-go uh, little USB power, but this thing, man, it really, if you're going to run 128 cores, you're going to need four amps, and so I got a wall wart uh, power supply for the barrel jack so I can provide the full power for this thing so that it can really uh, so that it can really run uh, full speed. Uh, I also bought a new memory card uh, 138 micro SD memory card because man with something like this I want to start out with a fast new big card and not an old card that I'm not sure where it's been or what's been going on so I would say probably 
would say probably that I just lost focus on this thing and you know how I am a stickler for focus and so let's see if we can get this thing to focus I'll give it something to focus on okay and then I'll see if I can take it back and then take it out boom ah okay I'm gonna try one more time I know you guys get annoyed at me because I get so obsessive compulsive about focus okay that is almost focused let's see if I give it a little more isn't it strange oh, okay isn't that beautiful focus there let me see if I can just turn it up okay maybe we can hold that focus because this thing is so neat it deserves to be in good focus so uh, the nano board is a hundred bucks I would say probably I've got about 200 bucks into this by the time I have all the bells and whistles added. I would say that at a minimum you need the nano board and then at a minimum you need uh, the fan in the case. So if you've got keyboards laying around and you don't mind <clears throat> you know, running USB keyboards and so forth, you could probably get by with the case and the uh, in the nano and a good uh, a good SD card but if you get all the bells and whistles like I have here it's probably going to be about two hundred dollars understand that the nano is bleeding edge bleeding edge technology so you can't just randomly get a Bluetooth or what you know a wireless keyboard and it might not uh, you know it might not work not everything works with the nano because it's brand new this was the the uh, keyboard that I had come with one of my Raspberry Pi kits it worked perfectly I like going wireless because again with a cool setup like this I want the minimum number of wires possible coming off of this thing okay so I spent the weekend playing around with this and I guess the question is so what will it do Again, I'm not going to sit here and run a bunch of benchmarks and talk to you about meaningless numbers. The question is, can I do cool things with it? And okay, let me say one more thing before I jump in. This is one of the reasons <clears throat> I am really excited. You can go in and do artificial intelligence or you can do all the different kind of cool things. I mean, you can rent a server like a very very high power Linux server where you can just remotely log on to it for like three cents an hour so everything that we might be doing you could do on a rented high power server but the thing that ex or you could do it on your PC even but the thing that excites me about the nano is that you have these GPIO pins and the GPIO pins are kinda like the same orientation and setup they've tried to kind of like mimic mimic the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi so all of that cool stuff that you can do with the Raspberry Pi a lot of that stuff is just right off going to be compatible with uh, is going to be compatible with the Jetson Nano and so what excites me is yeah you can do artificial intelligence but then with those GPIO pins with those GPIO pins you can then interact with the real world okay you can interact with the real world so I can get data from the real world and then I can affect change I can operate servos or I can operate different things and so the idea of artificial intelligence out there where you are interacting with the real world is actually quite exciting to me okay so enough of this nonsense and guys I can't talk and manage my production software and answer questions at the same time so we'll have a Q&A towards the end and so you guys can talk amongst yourself all right or and, and then at the end I'll come in and I'll answer your questions so let's just switch right over and the first thing that I will say oh my goodness oh my goodness the thing logged me out so this is going to be the first thing can I log in on live TV Boom! Did you see that? Did you see me log in? Do you know what pressure it is to go to your Nano and to find out that the thing has kind of uh, stopped on you? Okay, the first thing that I will say is I love the window that this is running Ubuntu. Oh, what is it? I don't remember. 18.04 or something. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but it's a it's a very modern and recent version of Ubuntu, and I really love 
the professional kind of snappy feel. I mean, this looks all business and the thing just boots up fast. I mean, it just kapow. These windows are very snappy. The thing is very, very snappy. Now, if it doesn't look snappy, understand that I'm coming through this remotely and I'm looking at a remote view. And so it's a little bit of a challenge because I am kind of going through operating it through my broadcasting software. So it's a little it's a little tricky for me. So my mouse, it's a little bit for me to get the mouse where I want it to go. But nice, clean win windows, <clears throat> very, very, very snappy. Let's see if I can open up a browser. Okay, boom, the thing just opens right up. Let's go www.toptechboy.com. And then we'll open that thing up and everything just fires uh, everything just fires right up and you know what I think I hit the space bar instead of the enter huh. perhaps I have lost internet let's come up here and see you know when it when it uh, when it timed out it might have uh, lost its internet connection Okay, let's come back. Connected, established. Come back over here and reload. Boom. Okay, so it is very, very, very snappy when the Wi-Fi is connected. Okay, but uh, everything just hops around really quickly. Uh, the windows are very clean, and there's not any of that sluggish drag that, like, used to when I would run some of the earlier versions. <laughs> Uh, just kick my coffee over. When I would run some of the earlier versions of, uh, say, the Raspberry Pi, you know, things were very, very sluggish. But this is like way, way snappier than my desktop computer. But of course, we are not here to use a desktop computer. We are here to uh, play around with the terminal. And I am going to open up a terminal window. And I hope I can still do this. I was not counting on that thing timing out on me so hopefully all my commands are still queued up let's go ahead and see if we can go full screen here okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to see if I can fire up that camera so this is just kind of like I played with this this weekend I didn't know anything about image recognition I didn't know anything about artificial intelligence I didn't know anything about OpenCV I didn't know anything about the Nano and this is just kind of how far I got over the weekend so let's see if I can uh, just do a simple camera so I'm gonna come in and if I am thinking right this should fire off the uh, Raspberry Pi camera. Hold your breath. Oh. Boom! Look at that! Look at that! That is looking back at me. Okay, that is the Raspberry Pi on the Nano. So you see, I can show you, I can show you the Nano. Okay, and then you see that little, that little camera on the Nano is looking back at me and so let's come back over here and you can see that just with uh, one line of one command now I had to do a little things to get it set up but I've got the Pi cam looking at me and creating a window on uh, the nano screen so I think that's pretty cool to be able to do that kind of like on weekend number one I was really excited when that thing popped up okay now the question is how do we kill this all these programs you kill differently so I can get confused a little bit okay and let me do a clear I'm sorry I want you to be able to see my command so now I'm gonna do I did I worked with a simple face detection uh, where that was just looking at the camera let's see if I can detect my face face detect dot pi looks like that might be a good candidate okay all right so now this is not the pie cam this is this is not the pie cam this is the USB camera and the USB camera is now looking down on the nano so this is kinda like the nano looking at itself but let's see if I can turn this around and get this up and let's see 
at, it's kind of hard for me to look at, see what the screen is, if it's detecting me or not. Okay, look at that. You see it's finding my face and my eyes. If I take my glasses off, it'll find my eyes better. Okay, so you see it'll find my eyes better if I take that off. But you see as I move, it'll track me. Okay. As I move, it'll track me. So that is face detection. So I just thought that this was incredibly cool that on the first weekend that I was playing with this, I was able to write a program that would detect and track my face. All right. I don't know if you're impressed with that, but I was impressed. Maybe I am easily impressed because I just haven't played around with this type of stuff before. But day one, I could fire up the PyCam. Day one, I could do face detection over a USB camera. So that was face detect. Okay, that one we did. So let's take a look at this one. Okay, so this is what is really neat about this one. This is just starting from scratch and writing code. I wrote a program that would go out and grab frames from the USB camera. Now, just one line of code I could change, and it would be grabbing from the Pi Cam. <coughs> but because I don't have the acrylic case, it's just easier to point. It's easier for me to point the uh, the. Uh, USB camera, so that's the reason I'm running that. Okay, so what I did was just I wrote a program that would go out and grab frames from the USB camera and then it would convert that frame to black and white and then it would display the original frame and the black and white frame. So now I'm in, they're actually beginning to manipulate, right? So this is not a CAN program. This is a program that I wrote that goes and grabs the frames coming off the camera, does a little image manipulation, and then outputs both the original and the different one. I was very excited about that. Okay, let's kill that. <coughs> oh, this one we kill with a Q. Okay, I told you each one of these uh, is killed differently. So let's look, open CV2. Let's do open CV3 and see what this does. Okay, what this does is I just put a box with text that's moving on the gray image. So you see I've got the gray image with a box with text that I can move, and that was live. Maybe I should show it again so you really know that it's live, not just a still picture. So let's, uh, let's get ready here. Okay, fire it again. Okay, you see how that was the manipulated, the adjusted image and live and text and a box moving. So why do I get so excited about that? Well, now because of those GPIO pins, remember our GPIO pins, I could have like a temperature, like a thermometer, and then I could have a view from a camera and I could superimpose data on the view from the camera. And then I could stream it somewhere where I could remotely. So all of a sudden my mind just starts going crazy with these simple things of things that I I could do with that. So that was OpenCV3. Okay. Let's see. <coughs> Let's do OpenCV8. Now this I thought was really cool. Okay. So what are you seeing here? Man, I've got to spread these windows out a little bit where you can see them. I got lots of windows and you say nothing is going on in those windows. Well, that's just because you're not patient, okay? You need to learn patience. This will be something cool if you give me a chance. I just got to adjust them where you can kind of see these different windows. Okay. So what you can see here is we have the original image and then in these other frames I'm doing some manipulation. So let me kind of give you something more interesting to look at so you can kind of see me here and not much going on. Okay, but what I wanted to do was start, start seeing if I could track an object. And so what I wanted to do was see if I could track a pair of scissors. All right. And so why are all these other screens blank? Somebody tell me. Class, class, why are all of these other screens, all these black screens, why are they blank? Because there's no scissors. But if I introduce scissors into the equation, look at that, okay? 
everything is ignored except the scissors. All right. Now the one where the scissors are white, that's where I created my mask and then I applied the mask to the image <coughs> and then I only kept kept the mask things. Now why all the different windows? Well the trick is to get all of the pixels from that red handle to be part of the image and not to have any of the pixels that aren't part of the red handle. So you end up with some noise and so I don't know if I can point but if you look over my shoulder you see how that first mask has some noise some little white speckles in the background the whole trick is to get rid of those now if I look at these windows that I am processing using different filters and different uh, image processing tools you can see that I've kind of gotten rid of the noise using different uh, using different techniques okay so I believe I quit these with a Q. All right. And I believe that was an 8. <coughs> I believe that was OpenCV example 8. So we will do OpenCV example 10 now. And I actually wrote all these programs. These weren't canned programs. Oh, here's where you get the uh, you get the uh, edge version of me. Okay, so a lot of times when you want to do uh, vision recognition and you want to do image processing, you want to be able to do edge detection. And so here I take the image and I find the edges. So you see, like if you look, you can see just the outline of things. Now things like this microphone. There's that wire mesh on the microphone. So there's lots of edges there but this is just kind of like a quick example of edge detection which is a pretty smart pretty important thing <coughs> and I need to hit Q to quit all right so let's see where we are now okay there was one more uh, man I shouldn't do these things on the fly I really shouldn't but I like to live dangerously so let me see if I can look at uh, okay maybe it is OpenCV did I do OpenCV4? did I do that one? Let's try four. I can't remember which one I did. It's either maybe four or fifteen. Oh, that was that moving box one. I can't remember if we. Oh, okay. Also, let me uh, let me quit it. But watch that moving box as it goes by. <coughs> it makes what's inside the box color, and everything else is black and white. Okay. So you see, if my head is in the box, it's color and everything outside of there is not color. All right, but now let's look at that LS again. So let's do this time. Let's see if 15 does anything interesting. There was one where I had motion detection. I really wanted to show you that. Ah, okay, here it is. This is motion detection. So you can see, you can kind of see me, but if I stand really still, I'll go away. It's hard to stand so still where you'll go away, but this is, so let me just give you some motion here. You see, <clears throat> let's let that calm down. Okay, so you see it really emphasizes motion. <coughs> so you see, this is some pretty heavy duty. This is really some pretty heavy duty artificial intelligence and image processing that I am doing here. And this is just working on it for one weekend. And so I am really pretty stoked about this. Okay, now what is really probably the most exciting thing to me, if I can do this without having this thing die on me. You know, it's very hard to do these things live. You know that? Okay, I need everything out of the view. And uh, let's see here. I need to kill this window. Okay. And now I need to point this down. I'll have to take a second to get this thing. Uh, give me a second.
Give me a second. Okay. I believe this is the one that you have been waiting for. Okay. Hold your breath. Ah, window open, window open. This is a monster. Oh, okay, at least we got something that opened here. So I need to kind of adjust this where it's just, uh, let's see if I can uh, get everything sort of out of its way. I need to just really have a nice blank spot for it to look at, which seems to be easier said than done here. And I don't want to unplug anything as I'm doing this. Okay. All right. Let's say hopefully that's good enough. All right. So do you see that there's all those words scrolling by in the upper corner? Watch this. Okay. Watch this. We put this here. Move my hand out of the way. Boom! It knows it's a ping pong ball. Image recognition. Uh-huh. Look at that. Image recognition. Uh-huh. And it really helps it to not have anything else in the picture, which is why I'm kind of fussing with my view. Okay, one out of one, huh? Look at that. All right, let's look at this. You think, well, I could do a ping pong ball. How about this? Just random something on my desk. Computer mouse, boom! Look at that, computer mouse. All right, it liked the mouse. How about the... Computer keyboard, boom, computer keyboard, look at that. And you see I can move it around and kind of put it at different angles and it knows that that is a keyboard. All right, let's try this. What is that? That is a ballpoint pen, boom. Okay, let's try, let's try this thing. What is that? Let's see, let's see if it recognizes it. Bullfrog! Bull frog. You see that? It knows a bullfrog. All right. Let's try. <coughs> let's try it. Got a little GoPro. Uh, it thinks it's a washing machine. Okay. It thinks it's a washing machine. Let me see if I can give it a little better light. Like Polaroid camera. Okay. I found it interesting that it was specific as a Polaroid camera as opposed to just recognizing a camera. Plus, it's like they haven't like made Polaroid cameras in what, like 40 years? So why they would train it on a camera that is no longer made, I don't know. But any camera, it seems to think, is a Polaroid camera. Okay, let's try this. Salt shaker, boom, even when it's not in focus. And you don't know how bad that bothers me that it's not in focus. Salt shaker. All right, let's try this. Okay, I got to kind of give it water jug pitcher. Okay, and you see you can't expect it to get it if it can't see it. So you got to kind of give it a view where it can at least it's thinking it's a coffee pot. If I had it better, you know, if I give it a better view, but you see as I try to back off, you start getting a lot of junk in there, and it has the best chance of getting it if it can see the whole thing. Uh, I would really like it to say picture on that, but coffee pot, that makes sense. Okay, so at least it's kind of reasonable. Now, it won't know this next thing that I'm going to put on there, but I'm going to put it, uh, maybe not, because it does see, it does see uh, the good thing is it is seeing that uh, it's in focus. Okay, what else have I got here? Uh, let's see this. Coffee mug. Coffee mug, and it's not even a very good view of it. Okay, coffee mug. Boom! <coughs> let's try this. Teapot! Teapot! We're doing artificial intelligence, and I've only been on the job two days. Two days, and we are doing artificial intelligence. Let's just see other things, like that's a tea bag, and it thinks it's toilet paper. Well, I'm sorry on that. It thinks it's toilet paper. Okay, that's better. It says that it's a packet, or it's a toilet, toilet tissue, an envelope. Okay, all close things, and... Probably it just hasn't been trained on uh, tea bags. Okay, it just probably hasn't been trained on tea bags. Let's try this. Okay, recognizes it as a pen. 
I am running out of things to try here. Ah, ah here's something. Let's try this. Stay out of my way, you aggravating cable. Okay. Screwdriver! Boom! Look at that. Okay. Let's see what else, if I have anything else here. This one it's kind of hard, uh, but let's see. Okay. Remote control. Boom. It got it. Okay. Let me get one more thing over here. I'll try, I'll try not to fall down in the incredibly enormous lake of spilled coffee. Luckily, it didn't all spill because of the lid, so I still have some. But I have a slippery lake of deadly coffee there. Okay, let's see here. So let's just try this. Okay, it thinks it's a remote control. Okay, iPod. Well, that's pretty close to iPhone. All right, that is pretty close to iPhone. So we'll say that was pretty darn good. Those things were pretty darn good. So uh, one more thing here. Let's just try that. Okay. Ruler. All right, it knows it's a ruler. Let me look here and see if there's anything else here on my incredibly dirty desk that I could throw up there for you to see. I had a pencil. I had a pencil. Let me see if I can get a pencil. Okay, so let's move this out of the way and then let's come in here. Rubber eraser, right? Rubber eraser. I almost had that thing time out on me again. You know that? Rubber eraser. Focus, you aggravating thing. Even not being in focus, it does pretty good, but it just makes me mad when things don't focus. Now, I still think it's a rubber eraser, but it also has a uh, pencil. Okay, so it's also sort of seeming to recognize a pencil. I think probably if I sharpen the pencil, it would lock on to pencil a lot, uh, a lot better. Okay, so now let's see kind of an interesting experiment. Like this is supposed to be artificial intelligence, right? So just ignore this for a second. Let me see if I can get this hooked up. <coughs> and so, sorry that I coughed on the microphone there. I talk all day, so I get a little, get a little parched in my throat after a while. Okay, so let's see if we can help this thing focus. Focus, you aggravating thing. We'll give a little free advertisement to Niblet Oil Field Service as we are trying to get this thing to focus. Okay, and then we'll come in and look at it. And this is the amazing thing. When I point it back at itself, the Nano thinks that it's a lawnmower. The Nano thinks that it's a lawnmower. Now, is it like it's aspiration, like one day I aspire to be a lawnmower. I consider myself a lawnmower, not like a 128 core supercomputer on a chip. No, I want to be a lawnmower. Okay. And this is kind of interesting because really like it kind of gets a little bit into the whole thing of artificial intelligence. And what I would say at this point, I really consider like after playing around with this over the you know, after playing around with this over the the uh, the weekend, artificial intelligence is a little bit of a misnomer because there is not yet, I think, in this field what I would consider the spark of intelligence, or kind of like the spark of independence. So, like I teach this thing to recognize different objects and then it recognizes things that I taught it. But the field of artificial intelligence is not yet to the point of, hey, I should go out on my own and learn new things or, you know, I could go here. You know, it's just still computing is doing what it's told. Now, I know a lot of times on the news you hear these reports of stuff, but I think a lot of that is just hype that still, uh, you know, the state of the art for artificial intelligence is the computer looks at itself 
and has no sense of understanding that it's looking at itself. It has no sense of itself. All it's doing is kind of running code that it has been trained, uh, that it has been trained on. So <coughs> I think the demonstrations that we are doing are incredibly fun and incredibly, uh, incredibly fun and incredibly exciting. And I am looking forward to really moving forward with this project. But I do think that the nomenclature artificial intelligence is a little bit beyond where we really are in this field at this point. Man, I hope you guys are even still there like that my stream didn't like die uh, 20 minutes ago or something. And I've just been sitting here talking to myself. Okay, let me see if I can catch up on some questions and then we will uh, answer some other questions. Let me see how far we are into this crazy thing. We are 28 minutes into it. Okay, that's not that's not bad. So let me see if I can uh, answer some questions here. I think it would be good if I popped out the chat so I can see it more clearly. Okay, that looks good. Let me see if I can catch up with the questions real quick and then I'll, I'll answer anything. new. Well, we got a lot of people out there. Hello, yep, hello to everyone. I was uh, trying to talk to you since a long time. Guys, you know, it's hard for me to talk to people individually because the problem, I read all your comments, I respond now and then when I can, but there's a hundred thousand of you. I have a hundred and seven thousand subscribers and there's just one of me. I can't help you debug your code because it's just like I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of requests and so I do have a job I do have to earn a living my family does need food like everyone else's okay so I can, you know I do have to work for a living and then I find time to make the videos but I don't have time to debug people's code that's why I'm hoping if you guys are going to follow along on this inertial measurement lesson these nine axis lessons that are coming out I hope you'll start them together and work together and kind of develop a community where you can sort of help each other okay uh, pretty cool yeah cool have you managed to have zero drift uh, there's no such thing as zero drift but if you look at that there is really really very good drift compensation because you think like magnetic north is rock solid it doesn't drift around <coughs> and that gravity vector is rock solid and so you use the gyro for quick changes and then you use the magnetometer and the accelerometer for long-term values and so you really start ending up with some pretty pretty impressive uh, things pretty cool cool uh, sir is all the graphics processed on the Arduino no the uh, data is taken on the Arduino the data we're talking nine axis here the data is taken on the Arduino and then it's sent to Python and then I'm using vPython for the graphics okay uh, cool, cool. Wow, that's amazing. Well, Teddy Johnson, order your BNO 055 and join the class. You know, it's going to start on Thursday, so you need to order that sensor. I'll put the uh, sensor links down below, and then after I get through these questions, we'll talk about whether you guys want me to do a class on artificial intelligence where we work on the Arduino. Uh, or we work on the Jetson Nano and I kind of teach you how to do artificial intelligence and like I say bare minimum hundred dollars for the board if you really want the setup like I have here probably you're gonna be pushing closer to two hundred dollars uh, I, I know you guys want to talk to me but there are a hundred thousand of you and that is the problem I mean that's the blessing that I have but I can't individually help people just because I do have to work for a living. Uh, best Arduino tutorials? Well, thank you, Teddy. Uh, checking in, Nicholas. Hello, I need your guidance on a project. I know you guys, you guys, but there's too many of you. There's too many of you. Uh, that is a serious toy, okay? Sir, I'm from India and working on a project that includes the use of high altitude balloons. Okay, that is a, that is a cool project. Yes, Teddy, down with Microsoft. And as I start playing with this Nano and how snappy it is, and everything it does sometimes I ask myself why do I even need a PC looks very tidy classy spec Fletch I wasn't sure where we were there so I'm not sure what that was uh, okay uh, sir uh, let's see boom I love your enthusiasm catalytic yes thank you uh, like the movie cyborg 
I will take your word for it. I don't watch movies because I am a doer. I am not a watcher. So w when you see me, you're going to see me doing something, growing something, making something, building something, designing something, inventing something, cooking something, eating something, fixing something. But you're never going to find me watching something. So I don't watch football. I don't watch sports. I don't watch movies. I don't have a TV in my house. I am a doer. But I will take your word that this is like sideboard. <coughs> okay. Uh, tutorials possibly yes that is what we're going to talk about here in a minute boom on the teapot yeah did you see that teapot how was the code for this the stuff I'm showing you most all that stuff I showed you was at most maybe 20 30 lines of code okay now you got to really learn a lot of stuff so it's not trivial but it's not like you're writing thousands of lines of code yeah the lawnmower was pretty funny the Nvidia lawnmower right okay this was great uh, that was good you are still online okay thank you I'm still here I wish you nicely attentive students and that you can tune your enthusiasm uh, okay uh, what's behind you you're asking me what's behind me okay let's see can I show you what's behind me what would that entail to show you what's behind me that uh, wrong one let's try this one okay what is behind me is a green screen okay and that's how all this magic happens okay that is how all this magic happens you see so like when you see this you see when you see this it looks like I'm in some NASA control room right but if you want to see what's behind the scenes I can show you that this is what it really looks like okay this is what it really looks like this and this is like a picture inside my brain okay this is like a picture inside my brain a bunch of random scrambled things that all come together and when they come together the magic happens okay there we got the magic happening but I, you know what I tried really really hard to have a really really cool like I wanted a really cool and dramatic angle a cool and dramatic shot of the nano because this shot is just not capturing how incredibly high-tech and cool this was and so if I'd had a little more time what I really wanted to do was I really wanted this thing to be in focus okay focus you aggravating thing okay so what I was going to do if I could was get it down to almost no wires coming out of it and just kind of have the power as the only wire coming into it and then what I wanted to do was put color LEDs inside of it where it would be changing colors and then have just a really like blank background and you would just see this with all these colors and then I wanted to put some uh, uh, dry ice and a little water so there was like smoke coming out with all these different colors but I spent the weekend getting the thing programmed instead of doing the cool graphic that I had imagined okay uh, show us some of robotic applications please for the next time guys I've just never gotten into robotics because the mechanics that we can afford are just so lame that it's hard you can get the best processor and the best sensors and all of that but it just seems like the robot doesn't perform very well because of mechanical components not that are within our price range of not being that great although you know doing robots with a nano might be a really uh, interesting project okay so I answered what's behind me okay uh, <coughs> show us some robotics okay can I use iridium satellite transmitter to transmit photos and videos you would have to be a wealthy man to do that because one data packet is like 20 bytes and it costs like 20 cents to send 20 bytes and so I use the iridium satellite network but it's for data packets like location or temperature man you would go broke plus the bandwidth is really low you can send maybe two packets a minute so great <coughs> but not for sending photos can radio waves be used to transfer data over yes we do that all the time and yes you could probably do 100 kilometers but there's a lot of issues with legality 
Uh, you have to be on frequencies that you are legal to be on, and there are very hard technical questions. Best tutorial, family fun time. I hope family fun time that you have fun with your family time in going through these tutorials. Okay, looks like there are some interest in the uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, uh, can the non-access projects be switched to use the Jetson Nano versus the Pi 4. Okay, the non-axis right now is on the Arduino Nano, okay, and then it's going to desktop Python. I could imagine doing it all on the Jetson Nano, but that's not part of the lesson. So I've got a bunch of you guys that are going to do the uh, the non-axis lessons, which you guys hounded me until I agreed to release them this coming Thursday. So if you don't have your non-axis sensor yet, go ahead and get it. And now I hope there are people still watching because I need to ask the question, should I think about doing, like I showed you what I did in one weekend, should I do like an artificial intelligence class for absolute beginners where we start with, you know, in all of us working on the Jetson Nano, all of us working on the Jetson Nano, and I just start you out. How do you boot the system? How do you put it together? How do you get your operating system going? Then we would have to learn some Linux because not everyone knows Linux. So you've got to find out how to work your way around the Linux terminal. Then I would have to show you a little Python because you can't do this crazy stuff that I showed you today in Python if you don't know Python basics. So booting the Nano then learning Linux on the Nano, not all of Linux, but just enough to find yourself around, then enough of Python to find to you know understand how to code in Python. And that should go quickly because it's like, how do you do an if statement? How do you do a while loop? How do you do a for loop? How do you get user from an interface uh, input from a user? How do you pass things over the serial port? Simple things like that. And then actually go into artificial intelligence and have an artificial intelligence. So the class would be artificial intelligence for the absolute positive total beginner and then go up through where we're doing things like image tracking machine learning things like that what I gave you a little hint of today now I'm willing to think about that but I'm not willing to do it if only two people are interested in it and so when I look at some of the classes that are out there already available they aren't really very well done because they assume that you're already a genius and then they teach you how to do something specific if you already know everything. What I could do is to show you how to do it from absolute scratch. But a lot of the <clears throat> classes on this that are out there, there are not a lot of people that have taken them, and so it doesn't look like there's a lot of interest. So I don't want to go to the effort of making a class if there's not going to be interest in it, okay? Uh, <clears throat> the tutorial on the non-axis starts Thursday, okay? Have you messed with the Pixie Cam? I have not. I have a Pi Cam and I have a USB Cam. Next live session, don't know. School starts. I'm going to have to go back to work for a living. I'll try to see if I can keep doing the uh, live streams if I can. Uh, well, I consider AI and machine learning and all that kind of the same thing. It's like start, we're going to learn Linux and Python, and then from that start doing things that could be considered machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, no, I am not going to show you how to transfer data over radio because there's a lot of laws involved in that. And if you don't do it right, you can get in a lot of trouble and then you're going to be yelling at me. Okay, uh, not sure when the next session is. Okay, we've got Sunil says that he would be interested. Yes, uh, Mr. Sloss says yes. Uh, Mr. MD Raman, yes. Okay, a uh, project on automated climate and light emulation in a closed room would be great. AI is the future. I did lie. This got me captivated. Okay, uh, please do the classes. What an opportunity. Let's go, folks. Okay, what I will probably do is down below, I'll put links for this setup that I have. <clears throat> and if I see people start buying this setup, then that tells me that there's interest. But what doesn't work, because i kind of gotten burned on this before. People say, oh, we'll make the lesson and I'll get the sensor. And then I make the lessons and then they say, oh, your lessons don't work with the sensor I have. Well, you know, it's hard enough to teach this stuff if we have identical hardware. And if I have one sensor and you have a different sensor and then you want me to go redevelop everything because you want to save $3 on a sensor, 
that doesn't work very well. But if you guys actually <clears throat> start getting this, I can consider putting together lessons on it. But I don't want to do it if there's not interest. And the way to show me interest is if, if I see people start buying, uh, buying these kits. And again, you don't have to get the whole setup, but I would consider a minimum would be the Nano and the acrylic case with the fan. And then a minimum you would either need to have a version 2 Pi Cam already or you would need a usb camera so a lot of this maybe you already have stuff laying uh, around uh <clears throat> yes please do the class yes on the jets and yes that would be great yes yes i'm interested very interested how much does the nano weigh and what is the power draw okay <coughs> uh <clears throat> it's i don't know what its weight is but it's a lot more like if you look we're getting something here that starts looking a little bit like a brick so it's lightweight by computer standards, but if you're asking from the perspective of high altitude ballooning, it uses a lot of power. And so your problem is not going to be the power of the nano or the weight of the nano. The power is going to be the, the weight of a battery to run this thing for a few uh, for a few hours. Okay, looks like we've got some <coughs> some interest here. Uh, well, I've had fun today. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Leave me some comments down below. I'm going to put some links down below. The links are going to be for the non-axis sensor because you can still order that and get started. That class is done. I've got 22 lessons on that. So that'll take you through 22 weeks of work at one a week. Then I'm going to put the links for this stuff up here, the nano stuff. <coughs> also, guys, I've set up a Patreon account, and if you guys want to help me out, go over. I'll have a Patreon link. Sign up for like five bucks, ten bucks a month, something like that. And the reason I'm asking you for that is, is that this is a hobby for me. You know, I don't have any sponsorship. I'm not getting paid to do it, and I am spending like a whole lot of money. I mean, it's not just my time, but you know, you guys were complaining about the sound, so I bought an expensive microphone. I got an expensive camera. I just had to renew the software for this broadcast and that was insanely expensive and so if you guys want to help me out at patreon i'm not doing like most people i'm not putting the good good stuff behind a paywall everything is available for everyone and if you don't want to help out okay fine <clears throat> don't help out you can get everything for free as well because i know a lot of people like we got a lot of people in africa that are watching this i know a lot of people just simply are dirt, dirt poor and can't help out at all great you know god bless you you know enjoy don't feel bad look at it for free but a lot of you guys can help out with five or ten bucks a month and then if i could start getting enough it would make it a lot easier for me to keep my equipment up to date and that sort of stuff not trying to give you the sales pitch but that would be a big help so i'll put my patreon account uh, below that you can click on help me out hook a brother up I'll put the link to the BNO sensor if you want to follow along on the nine axis sensor and then I will put the links for this uh, this gear that I have here now this video will go up as soon as I finish here and it will probably take me an hour or two to get those links on the description but just check back in a little while and I'll have those links okay Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys later